Understanding Kamikaze Defenses, A Double-Edged Sword in Corporate Takeovers In the competitive landscape of corporate acquisitions, the concept of a kamikaze defense has emerged as a contentious strategy employed by management to thwart hostile takeover bids. Named after the wartime tactics of Japanese pilots during World War II, kamikaze defenses involve drastic measures that may ultimately diminish the overall health of the company in order to dissuade potential acquirers. Below we explore the mechanisms behind this strategy, its implications, and the various forms it can take. Key Takeaways What is a kamikaze defense? It's a last resort defensive strategy management utilizes to prevent hostile takeovers, which may involve damaging the company's own assets or operations. Impact on the company, while the intent is to make the firm less appealing to prospective acquirers, these actions can often weaken the company financially and operationally. Common types, strategies like selling off key assets, crown jewels, implementing scorched earth policies, and incurring significant debt, the fat man strategy, are common forms of kamikaze defenses. The Genesis of Kamikaze Defenses When a company's leadership perceives an imminent takeover threat, they may resort to a kamikaze defense when conventional measures fail. Often, a takeover bid begins with an interested party discreetly acquiring a stake in the company and then attempting to negotiate for a buyout. If rebuffed, the party may escalate to a hostile takeover, aimed at disrupting the board's authority. In such dire situations, management may seek alternative solutions, like soliciting a white knight, a more favorable acquirer that would preserve the company's structure and culture or deploying defense mechanisms such as the poison pill strategy, which is considered less damaging in comparison to a full kamikaze approach. Why undertake a kamikaze defense? Fundamentally, a kamikaze defense is undertaken to protect the interests of current management, company founders, or their heirs, often at the expense of ordinary shareholders. In most instances, it serves as a protective barrier for management rather than safeguarding the financial health of the enterprise or the benefits accruing to all shareholders. Types of Kamikaze Defenses there are various methodologies that companies can adopt to make themselves less desirable targets, even if these actions come at significant cost. Below are some of the most common types. Selling the crown jewels. In an attempt to improve their bargaining position or to raise capital, a company may choose to sell off its most valuable assets, its crown jewels. Example. A company with valuable real estate or intellectual property may sell these assets to generate immediate revenue and make itself less appealing to an acquirer targeting these assets. However, this often compromises the company's long-term operational capacity and can stifle future profitability as the firm loses key operational resources. Scorched Earth Policy Adopting a scorched earth policy means stripping down valuable assets or implementing a systematic destruction of reputation and resources that the assailant might find useful. Example, this could involve laying off experienced employees, damaging equipment due to lack of maintenance, or even legal tactics that create barriers to entry for the acquirer. While this may successfully delay a hostile takeover, it runs the risk of inciting legal battles or harming company morale which could result in long-term damage. Fat Man Strategy In an effort to appear larger and more difficult to acquire, management may overleverage the company by taking on excessive debt or acquiring additional, often superfluous, assets. Example, by loading up on debt, the company may become too large and unwieldy for a hostile bidder to assimilate. However, this strategy can backfire if the new acquisitions do not yield expected synergies or drain resources further, leaving the firm vulnerable to failure post-takeover attempt. Conclusion Kamikaze defenses, while potentially successful in deterring hostile takeovers, pose significant risks to a company's long-term viability. The negative impact of these strategies can be profound, affecting not just the company's financial strength but also its workforce and broader market reputation. Management must carefully weigh the immediate advantages of disrupting a takeover bid with the lasting consequences these actions may usher in. In navigating these complex waters, 
the ultimate goal should not only be the preservation of management control but also the long-term benefit and stability of the company as a whole.